Hello and welcome back to The Dive presented by Honda. Season five, episode 25. Give me five, Freak. There we go. As you can see, Freak has joined us. Yep. Isaiah is not feeling well today. There are too many roster swaps through the LCS. Just can't handle it. Too, too much upset rosters, too many upset stomachs. Yeah. He ate all the cut players. That's why. <laughs> he they just went into his belly. He so I them. didn't. Mm. I didn't know that he was sick. I just uh, I showed up and then you know he wasn't here basically. That's yeah. why. And I thought that mm. he didn't inform us that he wasn't on this week and like he was off doing something else, mm -hmm. not just like not feeling well this morning when he put it in Slack. Mm -hmm. So I was about to like in a roast him. I was getting ready for it, and now I just realized that I'm just an idiot and I'm also you just a jerk. Can't read. He wrote a message in the in the Slack. You just yeah. didn't read it. I'm getting ahead of this though. <laughs> Next week I'm not going to be here. Oh, right. There you okay. go. Live announced on the dive first. Everybody's so flaky on this show. <laughs> I'm not dandruff free, ready to fill in for you again. And shoulders two and one. Freak's always ready to join us. Yeah, well, true. guess what? Good company. We are blessed with some drama today. Since we have changed a little bit of our schedule, we're recording the dive in the afternoon now. We had we, time. We've got time. Guess what? CLG decided to make some drama for us. Front page news here. Yikes. It's all over the front it, page. It is <sighs> a big night. Yikes. Okay, so I want to approach this with a bit of nuanced discussion because it is very easy and we are going to start with just slamming this because it is <laughs> ridiculous what just went down here and everybody's jumping on the train uh, as they should because it's it's a bit embarrassing. Yeah. But let's Tell just start happened. with it. You know, with the idea of transparency, you know, that that's great. However, this could have been executed, and there's so many clear examples of it being executed so poorly in this manner already, which is why it's so shocking. You know, breaking point, the sneaky benching from Cloud9, which was very similar where they're recording and while they're benching and everyone's like, you don't want to show those emotional moments, the you know, people at their lows with these kind of like hidden camera, you know, get in your face type of, they already know that that they're yeah. losing. Let's approach it like this. If CLG, and we'll give you a tutorial here, I guess. Okay, say CLG came out and they had, uh, you know, some representative. Tapo Talk about or Galen. Okay, you know, it's been really hard for us. Everybody knows we just tied for bottom score of the summer split in the LCS. We have tried multiple strategies in scrims. We've been trying to train different concepts and none of this has worked on stage. So we're going to take some drastic measures moving forward. We're going to make some changes to the roster. Everybody would have... Yeah, said, makes sense. You're in last. makes a lot of sense. You Swap drop them. down to last, make some drastic changes, then hit us with, and this is what we've been working on to try and change things. You know, yeah. we have dis identified these players maybe this is academy maybe mm -hmm. this is even something else or you know what what is the work that you have done in order to help out because the players on the team all already know and yep. feel like shit because they're losing and everybody knows they're losing yep. and people will accept that reasoning but if if you come out with a video that is boom no preamble just cut straight into depression mode seeing everybody guess what no actual plan of action given. This is the last time we're going to see, this is probably the last time we see these five players play together. Yep. And the only reasoning given is even worse than what I just gave. I would have assumed and by default given them better explanation than just, well, this week you went one, yeah. two. And if you had gone you three, zero, your job. then yeah. you would have stayed in. Yeah. If you had just not said that, I would have just assumed you had better reasoning of, oh, we're last place and we've tried all these things right. in scrims. And yeah. And and to be fair, like this is Tafo like picking his words in the moment, right? Like this is not a prepared statement. He's like umming and eyeing and like, okay, so he's prepare. not the best order. But like, yes, like to completely agree with you, not a good look. Oops by CLG. And I will say, I want to, I want to jump off slightly. Like when you contrast to say like Dignitas cutting Dardoch, like this was like, Whatever happened clearly was real big and real sudden at the end of that Friday game because they're like, it's Friday night at like 10.30 p.m. Hey, by the way, we've cut Dardock. It's like, got it. Something just happened. And I'm like, I get a drastic, like, mm. here's just like a blank, yeah. you know, tweet template. And in the case of Golden Guardians, read between the lines. And it's like, all right. Um, and I think that this, the, the thing is like, well, Solo is still on the roster and he'll be paid through the rest of the year. And it's like, Got it. They don't want to work with him anymore. Like, and they're not going to go out and blast him, whatever. But like, you between the lines, Solo then tweets like the very next day to 100 <laughs> <In the> shirt. <laughs> yeah, like, there's some oh, bad my blood. boys do well. Like, he's technically still on Golden Guardians. They're yeah. still paying him. Clearly, they didn't go well behind the scenes. But like, okay, 
still handled better than how CLG did this, right? So like you, you can see the other versions of like Golden Guardians where it's like, and my guess is toxicity as well. It's like, okay, they saw it coming and then eventually they they bought out Licorice mm -hmm. and then they've made the swap and then they, you know, saved face. And there's a Dardock one where it's like something clearly blew up and it's like, this is sudden because it is sudden. We're literally swapping between days. It's like, okay, sure, right? Like, but those at least were handled better than CLG knowing it's coming and they're doing a spur of the moment non-planned speech and just like showing their players sad. Yeah, I feel like as someone who likes transparency and likes mm -hmm. drama, yeah, I feel like there's so many things that were wrong with that video beyond like showing players sad or even showing players getting told that the bench is coming. Like I've been a part of videos that do it, but like it's a longer thing. It's like a 20 minute episode. And that's a scene exactly. within a thing with all this context that shows the coaching staff debating or the, the, the players arguing and saying like, we suck, you know, and like getting the players input. So you see all the sides of it. And then that's kind of like the culmination climax. And then you get the resolution follow of like, exactly. here's the plan going forward and all this other stuff that should go into a piece. I mean, you probably still wouldn't want to do it like that. It still wasn't good. But at least like I can see a world where like in a running series where something needs to change, you could make this work. But the fact that it was just a one minute starting with, well, the weekend started off okay against TSM and then you guys blew it. So some of you guys will never play together again. And like, it just felt like, whoa, what did I just step into? And that was the whole thing. And, there, it, like, the and then the, if you had gone 3-0, then you would still be in type of, like... Yeah, I, it's bad word choice, yeah. right? Like, straight up, like, and, and that's what it sums up to, is, like, Tafo had very bad word choice, and that's bad. And then someone at CLG okayed releasing the video, which means, like, someone else also screwed up down the line. Yeah. Um, and this was the result. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's why I, I'm extra sad about it. Because, like, one, it just sucks for the players, and, and, like, it sucks to be a fan of the league and be like, this is what one of the orgs is doing, really, yeah. kind of thing. Speaking... Speaking of the players, the I feel like the reactions, uh, you know, Finn was on his stream and had, like I'm saying, most people would understand, hey, yeah, the team's been doing really poorly. You're going to make some drastic changes now. If, if you had come at sure. it and explained from this yeah. perspective, it, it makes sense that people would accept this from a team that's tied for last. And Finn even himself is like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've been playing really bad. Like, yeah, yeah, he's like, all of us probably deserve at yeah. some point to get swapped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he said it. Like, so FlyQuest had a 10-game loss streak. They swapped their entire academy roster in. Like, like, they just didn't have the video of, hey, we're benching all of as you. As far as transparency goes, this is one of the easiest ones where people are already going to uh, quickly assume probable cause here yeah. and just give that to you. Yep. But <laughs> and that, yeah. that's why I, I, I'm extra sad about the videos because I feel like I'm worried that people will use this justification for like, well, this is why we don't put out videos explaining roster moves. It's like, well, like, you just did the videos. worst thing you could have done. <laughs> this is not an example of it gone, gone well. Like even the dig one, you know, was like decent. You know, like I hope teams continue peeling back the layers a little mm -hmm. bit, but like, God, have some a little bit more tact. Yeah, a, a little like you were saying, some setup into you know that moment. And even if Maybe. you, like, I think you can do it differently, too. Like, you don't have to take Tafo's exact audio. You can, like, cut around and just show people being really sad about it and then, like, cut to the, the GM later being like, hey, guys, after this, you know, like, we really need it. We need to make roster changes kind of thing. But I, I don't know. It was it was definitely not good. Anyways, yeah. finals. Hey, <laughs> was announced this week, not of CLG, the LCS finals. <laughs> um, the Prudential Center, super excited, yeah. mainly for fans to be back. Uh, I'm just super hyped for that. Uh, so many, all, actually all uh, of my favorite memories of competitive League of Legends are all casting in giant stadiums with live audiences. Mine's the my bedroom. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> At the dead of night. You know, <laughs> yeah. Super, yeah, groggy. Uh, but uh -huh. the returning to the live stadium, huge. You get the the emotion, the passion. It's just, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be outstanding. I, yeah. It's like, it was great having the players behind us for like the last few months. Like, that's been awesome. I, I'm, I'm like going to forget what it's like and then it'll just be like a pleasant surprise again. I specifically, now you just, uh, you know, set off another, um, mm -hmm. you know, ping in my memory of just our cast the other day where we're listening to EG game and <laughs> they're just cackling on stage and you can hear the laughter yeah. and it's just so fun. And we actually never got that experience before because we always had a crowd and the crowd noise would be way louder. Yeah. So this was a, a cool little extra insight. We we used to do uh, occasionally like have countdown segments on the stage as players are getting ready. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. there's some pretty like epic stuff. You get like, some looks. You get some looks as you like show a tier list as they're about to play. Like, I know high. We were like we're predicting something and high was on FlyQuest and he like booed us for for predicting the other team to win. <laughs> like, do you remember when high got fined for flipping off a camera or something? Yeah, what was that? That was that All Stars. It was All Stars when he replaced Link, I think. What what did? No, or no, no, no. That, no, goes, that was backwards. That was backwards. No, and yeah, that was an MSI thing. I th or no, it was when I, whatever. It was All Stars. We're going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. 
I was, I, it was an I international, international event for sure, though. Yeah, yeah. it's one of the things that Cloudman went to and then maybe got out of groups in. I thought that one was funny. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring bring back live audiences. Uh huh. I agree. Uh, Get your vaccine. Final order of business for the announcements at the top of the episode: uh, the new champion. Mm-hmm. Freak, you just did the spotlight. I did. So I will let you initiate. Sure. Yeah. So uh one of the so the first thing, because sorry, I'm gonna veer off the kit initially because I am I'm such a stickler for trying to get names right. I do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it's action. Action, no. action. How dare you? He's saying um, he's so, he's providing you right. what not to do. So so uh he is uh culturally like the earth equivalent is I think North African. And so like those are not languages I speak very well. Uh so the sounds are more like akshan. Like, like the word suction without an S, mm-hmm. that's still Americanized. And so like, that's not quite right, but just like Akshan is like roughly his name, just by the way. Um, yeah, so he's supposed to be a mid lane marksman assassin, right? Yeah. So like meant to be a mid laner, meant to be a solo laner, um, meant to be more of an assassin than like consistent DPS. So in, in the way that we have like champions like Jin, who's like, yeah, Jin does not bust tanks down. Um, and Vayne does not poke. It's like, well, okay, Akshan's more of like an assassin, right? He has camouflage, swings around walls, does not get over the walls. Um, like all of his skill shots can be blocked. There's a bunch of like missing health, like scaling kind of stuff going on. Um, he can get basically one revive per team fight. Um, and it's if he- Because of the cooldown. Be, yeah, because they, of the cooldown. They, they, and it's like, and also keep in mind, like, you know, you get one person back and then four people die too late, right? Like, you can't get the rest of them. Um, and it has to be on the person who kills them. So, like, if, you know, Jinx gets a quadra kill and pieces out, there's no revive there, right? So I think it's generally being a little bit overstated. Uh, but it'll certainly be interesting to see. It's clearly a unique mechanic. Uh, and I, I mean, to me, like, honestly, like, I just want to see the games before I, I say a lot about them. I will say that they can't be too bad about people overreacting because of the lack of clarity uh, as far as, you know, clearly displaying the cooldown and getting that out there. Sure. I mean, he's not out yet and this boss not out yet, right? Like, yeah. it's like, well, this champion that none of us can play it. We don't know enough about the champion. Well, you can't play it yet. And like the materials aren't even all out yet. Like, so like, I'll I take that line briefly. When sure. in extreme mechanics are introduced mm-hmm. without full details, sure. I'm not surprised. Yeah, sure. I, I totally get that, right? And, and you know, they're, I, I understand like when players see like a new problem, they're like, this is very different. Like it's not what I'm used to. Um, I know one of the game designers and people are going to love and hate this, certainly T, um, he actually is a fan of like giving players new problems to solve. It's like, yeah, Zoe's skill shots don't decay going through walls. So like, you know, the E is going to go really, really far. She has longer reach than everyone else in the game. So learn about it, right? But she, you know, that champ has no natural escapes and her CC like takes three seconds to actually land on you before you actually fall asleep. So it's like, I'm giving you different problems to solve and this is what you need to figure out. And I know a lot of players don't like that kind of stuff. I get that. But, you know, I'm I'm generally going to be a fan of like more interesting, unique designs because yeah. there's 150 champions. You got to find uniqueness. Somewhere. I like interesting and unique designs. It's very frustrating when some of the problems do not have solutions and require... Yes follow-up changes so if they don't have solutions then that's a screw up right like like straight up like i know for a fact the designers like they want there to be weaknesses the gameplay team who are like gm plus in most cases like they're gonna play these champions and in the games that are like a bunch of grandmaster solo key players are like oh yeah no i feel like i can beat action because like i just play an assassin and i just like what do you build against zed when you're action you die okay cool so i have counter picks like you know and this kind of stuff so um, but hey, if it screws up, right? If they're overtuned, there's there's no weaknesses, then then absolutely like please follow up change. I know everybody's focusing on the revive mechanic, but for me, when I first heard about it, I was most excited for the Spider-Man style swing yeah. cool. off of walls because Nick Wu, who now works on Valorant, yep. used to work on League of Legends, told talked to me about this champion, and he's he's a jungler, and he they at that time this ability. It, this ability was taken from a different champion's kit. Right, was in a jungler's kit, and I was so excited because new forms Wait, of mobility. Now, <laughs> yes, because <laughs> it's being shoehorned basically super hard into solo lane, and I foresee it not being great in the jungle because actually, it seems like the way this mo- uh, mobility is going to have the best effect is during the the wide open spaces yeah. where you can have a lot of room to work More with off the wall, way, yeah. and within the actual jungle corridors is is not that great because you have a lot more to collide with so i am a little frustrated i'm still going to try the champion and i try every champion that i think is even remotely possible to jungle great but i I have also, you know, lowered my expectations as far as it being successful jungle and will probably be, you know, pushed very hard for being solo mid laner. Unlucky. I still think the the whole 
idea of basically playing like a teched out Indiana Jones esque, like flying around scoundrel yeah. kind of guy. Like, or he's he fights scoundrels, but whatever. Yeah, but he's he's Uncharted. He's Indiana mm-hmm. Jones. He's all great. those things. Yeah, he's Nathan like, Philly in the character. I'm yeah. about that. You know, yeah. Aladdin type of feel also to me. You know, that type yeah. of uh, Prince of Persia running yeah. around on walls. He got some and stuff, stealth. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So definitely looks fun. Looks uh, fun. Let's get right to our Honda MVP section yes. though here, and this one for our Honda MVP question is going to be very standard because we've just finished the second round robin. So at the second round robin, this is our summer. This is fully stacked. We do a complete three. Very, very stacked uh, split that we have here. Mm -hmm. Who's your front runner so far? I feel like this is a good time to bring it up too because it's hard to answer. Yeah, I feel like it's hard. I feel like 100 Thieves have to have a candidate. But even within that, there's like three options for me. I love FBI. I actually think he's so, so good and helps that team a lot just because they always have bot priority almost the, the eg game aside where they kind of got clowned on by ignar's thrash like they almost always are winning bot lane and it's like well just take drake whenever you want you know you, you can just get it whenever because you have who he and fbi popping off closer's obviously been incredible and then abadage as the substitution that made them the number one team mm-hmm. will get a lot of credit i think if i had to pick one i'd probably pick closer right now really yeah, yeah. out of all the hundred thieves players yeah. you're not picking fbi or abadaga I feel like he pops off the hardest. So uh, supporting evidence for you, because I'm going to be on your side just because yes. just I love using statistics with no context. Um, <laughs> me, baby. So the the group stage, uh, like the 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 you know two round robin so far, um, player of the game number one tied for first is closer, tied for first Spica, uh, with six player of the game so far. Third place is tactical at four. So mm-hmm. in Teal with a revolving door, like obviously a followers played like four games or something, right? And and those have been okay, but they haven't all been wins. I think he's like two and two. Um, it's like, okay, well, Tactical's actually been the one like coming out and doing really, really well. Um, he seems to be good on the Aphelios, which is like back in and and a viable pick. So that's doing really, really well. Um, Abadaga is up there at three. Destiny's tied with him, but I don't think anyone from Immortals is getting anything there. Probably not. When Immortals wins, Destiny's the one getting the votes because he's the one engaging, right? So um, it's interesting to see like what the player of the game totals have actually been. Uh, you know, as far as like player of the week's concerned, like Xerxes was the opener. We've had an Abadaga one, had a closer one. Licorice, I don't think is going to get it. FBI is one of the player of the week's. Broxa, not going to get it either right there. Um, so like, you know, that, that's what we have done on like a, a more micro scale. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting to see like where those votes have gone. Yeah. So I don't know. I, w- I would put probably closer with a lot of flexibility still in this vote. Like there's three weeks left. I feel like right now, though, the Diana performances are absolutely insane. Uh, when he, he played the most recent Olaf game, his Zen games earlier were really good. Yeah. Um, and I feel like Abadaga has taken on a little bit more of a supporting role to enable him at times. I feel like you're about to, you got some, some facts you're ready to hit me with. I'm just ready with my answer. All right. Go so, for it. So, letting... so I'll say he feels like the most important part for them when they crush games and snowball really hard. And just because of the nature of the relationship between him and Abadaga, I feel like Abadaga is more often on a supportive style or like helping him out more mm-hmm. than uh, hard smurfing himself usually. Did you want to do yours, Freak? Because you, you already mentioned Spica, and this is mine for, for TSM. Because I feel like 100 Thieves, they're going to steal votes from each other for me a lot yeah. because there, there were so many contributors. I actually think that Someday is the most underperforming person on that team. Totally and agree. everybody else on that team Might get some votes. Is, is taking up votes. So uh, that's yep. why, yes, you know, 100 Thieves are one game technically in the overall standings ahead of... Uh, of TSM, but to me, TSM relies so much on Spica. Huni has had some really good weeks. He's also had some bad weeks. Spica has been so consistent and incredibly impactful yeah. in all, all all of their games. So I feel like that to me is a really big front runner. TSM right now, right up there, second place in the league, both overall and just in summer. Yep. So. I'll also throw in to help support you a little bit is I feel like he was on volley bear duty and a lot of like, we're playing scaling everywhere and your job is to like just control the early game. But since they've been trying to play a little bit more aggressive and he's gotten to play like Diana games where there's a bunch of people diving in with him, I think he's had more pop-off performances, which are a little sadly like really important for MVP voting because you need to wow the voters yeah. to make mm-hmm. them actually want to put your name down over other people. And I feel like before his style was not great for wowing people. Sure. Even <laughs> if he's playing really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now he's like, oh my God, he's like a 10 kill, di- 12 kill Diana game in that loss yeah. or whatever it was. Yep. that, Or they won it, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to chime in one thing though, which is Evil Geniuses had the same number of wins in summer as TSM. So if we're looking at just summer, EG are also the second best team in the league. And Ignar, Danny, like... That's maybe my front two, 
for, from that team. And it's like, I don't really have someone that's like, okay, really, yeah. really recently biased. Like Danny had a great weekend, so did Ignar, like those two yeah. are really up there. It's hard for me to be like, yeah, but you played as well as Spica across the last six weeks. Yeah. But but like, that should probably be in the running in a certain, like to a certain degree. But it does feel like EG are a bit more well-rounded, so it's harder to find that one star. Yeah, I feel like Impact gets some votes. Danny definitely yeah. gets some votes. Ignar gets some votes. Yeah. I think Jazuke should as well. I know that uh, there's a uh, mixed feelings because know, there are wow moments in both ways for him. But I think he he should wow and whoa, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Yeah. yeah, but uh, but to be fair, there are so many more of the oh you know so good mm -hmm. that that he's done. That I think mm -hmm. he definitely deserves it too. And right now for me, like there's no shot anyone on TL or C9 is is like in my MVP ballot. Like none of them are playing consistently well enough. So what's your that. answer, Mark? Mark answered. My I answered? actual MVP answer is probably Spica. But I think if I pick first team, I might actually just legit just pick 100 Thieves with a different top laner. Mm. Like, th this might be the a one ballot ever where I'm going to have a different MVP than first team in that role. Because like, even though I think Closer is like maybe the better jungler, and I'm not even sure that's true, right? Like, in three weeks, I will decide. But Speak is a clear MVP for me, but not clear first team. Mm. I that's interesting. I feel like when I you talk about the full ballot, it gets interesting too. Yeah. Because because I would put Speak on my ballot for sure. Number two, no matter who, depending on who I put from hundred thieves right, right mm -hmm. now, probably. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm putting Speak in number one jungle and for my MVP. That's so right. then I'm probably going like one in three are hundred thieves members, which sounds like really troll, but like honestly, yeah, hundred thieves are all. I mean, they have two wins more than anyone else in summer. If you're doing just summer. They probably have like about four of those people are, are top two. And it's a weird weekend because they're coming off the one and two weekend where they lost some games. So it's like, yeah. Eh. But I feel like if they close out the, the split strong yeah. it's yeah. between them and TSM. Yeah. Well, we've got a new patch, which will shake things up and a whole nother round robin to play. Mm -hmm. So the votes very well could easily shift by the end of the split. Yeah. Lots to lots to go on the still from here. Huge. I'm actually very excited for it, uh, you know, after playing on it on live. Mm -hmm. And now this week, we're going to have Tom Kench also enabled. Yep. After the WeWorks. And I believe the hotfix buffs that came in. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're like buffs just in 11.14. So, yeah. um, like, you know, whatever. He soaked for two weeks to make sure, like, bugs and whatever. And, like, people get to play the champion. He was a big enough rework that he was, like, classified a new champ, thus delayed by a patch. And, yeah, 11.14 had some changes that um, that add a bunch of, like, damage and regen. So, yeah, Tom Kench is is in and a good top laner. Aurelia is in and a good top and jungle. Um, Lilia buffs are massive. She's a good top laner and jungler. Like, I... Like teams are clamoring for AP junglers right now in, in the current metagame. And Lilia is, I think, as good, maybe better than Diana, depends on people's comfort, but she seems very good. She's good anti-melee. Like, I feel like this is a really good Lily metagame. Um, so that should feel good. I mentioned Aurelia already. Um, Stridebreaker nerfs are a big deal. Nocturne is gone from lanes. Like Nocturne, if any team, I'm just gonna say it to camera, if any team picks Nocturne top or mid in 11-14, this is a horrible draft. Please do not play Nocturne in a lane in this patch. It is trash now. Uh, but a great jungler overall, I think still very viable. Um, some Akali nerfs that matter. Uh, like, there's just so much. It keeps going. Yeah. So the way that we usually do it is pick out one thing that you're super excited Lilia. for to go in on. Uh, I think Lilia is a good choice because to me, I was going to bring up the the extra, the increased cooldown on the Q, which is one thing that she did give up for the extra power put into the kit with the yeah. changes. Yeah. Her early clear is definitely weaker. Yeah. Like, I, I, I played a lot of Lilia on release. Um, and then I played some Lilia after the patch and like the first few levels feel bad because the, the dot lasts three seconds uh, and your Q is like a six second cooldown at rank one now. And it's like, oh, I'm just sitting here like with, with the dots gone. I'm not getting the region from it anymore. Like I'm just like auto tagging this thing for three seconds and waiting for my Q to come back up. Like if you don't get a, a, a reasonable leash, it feels pretty bad, even if you start Raptors. Because again, the dot just falls off. You're just sitting there waiting for damage again. So um, that definitely feels quite a bit slower. But once she gets rolling, she's great. The region in Comet's a really big deal. Her AP ratios are all really good. So once she's at like two items, she's just like stronger in all cases. And in, in some cases, she's like better before as well. But um, you really have to feel around two or three items. Um, so if you are able to like get a lot of farm, she's worth getting the, the resources. The in combat region is really meaningful. Like she'll stick around a lot longer. Um, she's just like a much better team fighter. Um, just like not quite as good the first levels of clear. I'll throw in Aurelia then. If you're taking Lilia, I'll take Aurelia. I think what's interesting is I saw Revenge tweeting about her and the change to her E cast time feeling awful because it's now not it's just dodgeable. Like it's yeah. Before it was like you know, it would just go to set rate, and wherever you sent it was how long. It yeah, took to if go you cast off. on yourself, and then, then it was in so little time that you would pre yeah, pretty much be able to guarantee. Right now, it's 0.25 seconds arming time effectively, no matter where you and send then it. it shoots out, yeah. And so I think that changes how a lot of people like to do trades, where you could like set up these very easy ease to land, and it's a bit of a 
hidden nerf that feels also terrible where like maybe you can learn to replay it but i feel like as much other changes that happen with her because there's a lot they like made her bruisier bruisy yeah she, she's weaker early game <laughs> stronger late game in terms they of gave her bruises they gave like, she has more health scaling in her w scaling, damage reduction yeah. scales up over level so like yeah. she is much more durable and like functional in team fights late game right so i i think like you said buffs good yeah. generally but also i feel like the people who used to be like Aurelia one tricks are not going to enjoy her as much because I, I feel like a lot of the yeah the, it's less flashy yeah the highlights were like oh look at me pop off and make you look like an idiot and also just in laning phase you could get some really insane uh, yeah. kills and snowball and it, it yeah. feels less likely to happen that way which means like well would you pick her now so I, I wonder what matchups people are going to try her in because she used to be able to like kill some squishies in, yeah. in range matchups and stuff. I mean, basically, yeah, they they just added guaranteed counterplay with the extra time on landing the skill shot of Q. Yeah. So you're looking for more setup when you pick her with a jungler, maybe you know something to to ensure that you can actually hit it, because then add to your to the point, much more durable later. The W also absorbs so much more later, yeah. and now also you know the the magic damage uh, reduction is is going to be a big yep. part of it. So. Mm -hmm. I I also foresee her being stronger. It's just that maybe more conscious as far as other things drafted around it or against it, having things to dodge if you're against it, mm -hmm. having things to set it up if you're with it. For jungle, yes, the the stride breaker change was the biggest thing because <laughs> I was like, I'm just building stride breaker on literally anything that <laughs> you know wants health and uses attack speed, mm -hmm. which was a lot of very good junglers. Yep. And I've switched over just over to Gore Drinker now after the changes for most of them because most of them were melees that want to be bruisery. I think mm -hmm. Gore Drinker is a very good substitute in most of the scenarios. Mm -hmm. There's not really a, a great substitute for losing a 90% slow. That's why you lost the 90% slow. Yeah. It was, but, it was you know, very powerful. I will say for champions like Nocturne, who's still going to use it uh, like a lot of the time, um, I think it's it's a it's a close choice. Like a 40% slow, like keep in mind, like in League of Legends, like so there's, there's two things that happen. So one, only the single strongest slow takes effect. Yeah. Um, and two, like there's diminishing returns on movement speed as it goes down. So like a 99% slow, you still have 100 move speed, despite that being like 25% of your total move speed. So... Uh, in actuality, the movement speed difference between 90 and 40 is not as big as it looks on paper. It is meaningful, but like, you know, it, you, you, like if you're using it, so like, oh, you can't flash my fear tether. That's still true. Yeah, I I consider the blue smite a pretty decent option for it, even mm. though red smite has a lot of really, you know, good uses versus a lot of comps. If you're looking at one where the game is important that you do slow down that target and get to it, I feel like that's an easy substitution. And, and Gore Drinker gives you a lot of sustain. Yeah, it's still very good. Um, Gore Drinker is also my choice for Zin Zhao, which was my my plug plug and play already there. So that that's kind of the... There wasn't a huge shift in jungle. The, probably the one I'm most excited for is that Lee Sin is just going to be played more and more as jungle champion. The a Q got an extra little buff there too. And I want to see junglers with, with their hands on it yeah. because it's... I feel like there are You've more some bad solo lanes. There are more clean plays. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I want to see the you know the the peaks of the champion. Yeah. that is is honestly most junglers and a lot of even players just generally favorite champion in the game. Yeah, yeah, I, it's one of the most popular been. champions really fun. that we've ever made, and it has been around for so long that it has. Leeson just has the giant, most giant fan base. So yeah. a lot of people want to see this champion succeed and used to its peak. 2020 champion released in 2012 or whenever it came out. Yeah, he's, he's you know, gets really held up, which is great. They have removed the attack speed slow a while back. but uh, Attack speed slow, all the extra insane stats on Extra w. armor on his W. Yeah, they yeah. actually took the mechanics off the champion. They took a and lot he's of still <laughs> relevant. Yeah. So, you know, good job, right? Um, they did change the Q around a bit at one point, but yeah. He, I mean, he's good. He's a fun champ. All right, let's get right into the LCS then. Woo! Friendos, what a weekend we've had. It just feels like every week we keep getting bangers, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's overused. It is overused. Not this weekend, though. It was appropriate <laughs> this weekend. We had a bunch of upsets, but now we're also seeing like just what a what a reversal of fates here with there being these sad stories like old fly quest and then having this trade of licorice which seems like a get me out of here you know both parties want to break up yep fly quest bringing their entire academy team go three not only do they snap their 10 loss streak but go three zero in doing it and on the other side on golden guardians licorice is is winning lanes solo killing yep. his opponents versus yep. the top teams in the lcs 
it, it seems like we just have more and more fun stories going on out of a scenario which looked very dire for both sides. It looked dire for FlyQuest and Golden Guardians previous to this trade. Right. And now, happy sunshine week, Mark. I'm excited, <laughs> dude. I've been hyping FlyQuest up low key for so long. The FlyQuest Academy. I'm yeah. gonna say FlyQuest Academy for the. Say it for like I cast them in the Academy. I cast I'm... them. I feel like I swear to God, if you watch this team play in Academy, and like not like I was there the whole time, but like as soon as I watched their first couple games, I was like, wait a minute, these kids are actually good. And I pushed for them to like when I I was been on here, I've been like they should put their whole Academy team in. They finally did it, and you see why because. They showed such an important part of League of Legends, which is teamwork. Mm. Um, and I think they raised a lot of important... I think watching them raised a lot of important points to people that you can like abstract out. Same with the licorice trade being a part of it as well, being like, oh my God, he looks like a dumpster fire. To like, you just... It looks like the best top player in the league all of a sudden. Um, there's the individual players on FlyQuest I'm excited to talk about. There's their play style, which is awesome. And like memeing people are like, it's like an LPL team, but like kind of actually a little bit like <laughs> in terms of how they approach the game, they'll make crazy plays. Um, the importance of teamwork and then also just like actually using the academy system. All these are such important things. I feel like that all came from this move. Yep. And I got to give credit to FlyQuest. I saw this uh, mentioned online and it sparked the memory, which is um, FlyQuest have had a good academy program almost every year. Like they're consistently a good academy org, which is great. Like they're one of the teams that feels like they have really invested in it. I'm glad to see it pay off so well. I think they had an academy title like earlier, like a year ago or so. And now it's like, oh, well, actually, they're also like maybe a top five LCS team. It's like, yo, well done. Like, like shout out to the coaching staff, like shout out to the player, like shout out to the, the scouting, like all of that is involved, you know, not just five players, though, of course, they deserve props as well. Like big ups to FlyQuest for making that happen. It's cool too, because you, you mentioned the strengths of them as a team and they come from so many different backgrounds where NXI is straight out of the, you know, scouting grounds this year. Yeah. So he's super young. And then you have the burnt out kind of returning how do you work your way back from academy style break back into lcs I mean, rooting for the underdog kumo diamond type story he's been playing yeah. since 2012 in like academy <laughs> yeah. level competition yeah, I mean, like he's been went in the lcs and then and then flopped and, and went back to academy and so you, just you've got to have this this resurgence and then we've got another an osh player you know brought over too with triple who had mm -hmm. a really good interview on the desk and talking about you know bringing up uh, and helping NXI develop and, and that type of stuff. So you have all these stories intertwined for all of them to succeed at this level of, you know, being once they're all subbed in all together yeah. on stage yep. to have the three zero. Yeah, I think that was a big part of like, because initially they put in just the top and the bot parts and it felt like, well, this isn't really the strength of the team because they're so aggressive. And I think no one exemplifies that better than Kumo because I don't feel bad saying this now, but I hated watching him play back when he was on EG because he would like take Jace and then not play aggressive. You go D shield Jace into like Volley Bear. I don't know if you guys remember this game. And like he I got don't. hit for like 100 damage over the whole laning phase. Yeah. And he's not, he would play it into GP. He wouldn't like contest the barrel mini game. So he'd like lose wave push. He just looked like he was playing scared. And it was extra annoying because like you could tell he was actually a decent player mechanically, I felt like when I watched him. But like there was some sort of like whether it's the team dynamic he was on before or what, like it just wasn't there. And then when I started casting in Academy and then see him again on stage here, I was like, oh my God, he's a totally different player. He's like nuts. Um, and so it's so cool to see like this seeming like mind shift change. I don't know exactly, mm -hmm. you know, what, what led to it all, but he actually looks like the player that people were hyping up a year and a half ago when he was initially brought on to EG. And I, I love watching him play now. He's so, so aggressive. I think this year we've, we've had a lot of examples of successful use of the Academy system too. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would say Jenkins mm -hmm. was, was a, a very good initial one, you know, just as far as his play and fitting into Team Liquid. But now this that it's been proven for an entire team and everybody's coming out with the memes of like, oh, yeah, you were talking about top academy teams so underrated they could take down bottom tier yes. LCS teams. And top tier LCS teams. <laughs> Apparently see not. <laughs> they can shoot pretty high there, I guess. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like on the, the point about the teamwork part too is it's – I was talking with Hai about this on Friday before all this craziness happened, before Licorice popped off and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about how, like, it doesn't feel like any other traditional sport, the importance of teamwork affects individual perception or performance quite as much because of things like snowballing and there's no puck or ball that you're chasing around. It's like you're in your lane, but there's also all these other people doing their own thing at the same time. And, like, if someone coordinates better with their team, you're just going to look like crap. So, uh, it's so important in league to have a team that sees the game the same way you do. EG is an example of that as well, um, where Artemis was on the desk talking about how they all play the same way. So I feel like 
that this team showed like, okay, individually, most of these guys are probably not going to be winning a ton of all pros, but they can beat anyone because like, hey, Baron went down. I'm going to TP top instead of doing the basic reset that everyone does. Game three. Uh, we got our lovey-dovey out of the way. Yeah. I'm, How long do you expect to continue? That's what the people want to hear. I think people, if you expect them to be one of the best teams in the league right now, you're overrating them. And yeah. this is coming from their biggest fan probably right now on the desk. Okay. It's like, I love this team, but realistically, they're they're probably a middle-ish of the pack team, which is still insanely good. Right. And and as a team that was, you know, on a 10-game losing streak, they're in seventh or uh, eighth right now. Like, they are at the playoff cutoff, and only then because they won games to, like, get, make sure they're really ahead of CLG and Golden Guardians. It, it's a little bittersweet for me because I've I've been a Golden Guardians homer, like, the entire time. And with Licorice, they've looked so good. Uh, but FlyQuest, two games ahead and looking good, means they're probably going to keep that lead. Um, reliably, like they're gonna, they're, I feel like they're of kind of similar power levels, roughly. And like, hey, they're both fifth place teams, roughly. It's like, okay, well, two game lead. So now, unless they both leapfrog Immortals, I'm sorry, Golden Guardians, your late season surge won't be enough. You're gonna miss out on top eight, which is too yeah. bad. Uh, I don't know if you want to transition to Golden Guardians yet, but no, I want to crack down on this fly quest team okay. because we're doing lovey dovey. Yeah, it's great. I, they I, got I said, down. I said they're fifth six team. They are which playing. Go like two one. They are two. playing TSM. Evil geniuses loss, loss, and hundred thieves. Loss. Yeah, they're going zero three. They're going one and so two. So I want to be realistic here, <laughs> as yeah. far as as far as the story. No, those are the three best teams it, in the league. It's great the success they had, but even with the topsy turvy kind of top end of the LCS actually tumbling and, and being very inconsistent, I do expect the losses to to start to come in now. You know, and that's the real test when they have to fight through those. Okay. One and two. <laughs> I, I'm, I think that they play they're more coordinated than a lot so of you teams think, you think they're going to win one of the three games next weekend yeah which one I don't know okay just just one they're, yeah I feel it's like in the, it's in the cards the okay. way they play the game is like they will just see a play and go for it yeah and sometimes it's moronic like the third game when like triple ended up TPing down and just feeding over another killer you're like what were you doing but they don't get deterred ever whereas a lot of LCS teams whether it's for whatever reason the pressure as soon as one play goes bad they're like Back in their turtle shell. I think I'm most excited for their matchup versus Evil Geniuses. That'll be fun because I mean, EG are on a super surge as well, eight in a row. Yeah, probably nine in a row. We'll see how EG Golden Guardians goes uh, on the Friday. Like that one actually, I think is low key a, a tight match because of how well Golden Guardians are playing. Yeah. Like who knows what's going to look like? But yeah, it, it, suddenly we've got a bunch of games that are like way closer than we thought, uh, which which is great. Yeah. All right, we can do the other lovey dovey side of it then with the Golden Guardians and Licorice because great. Licorice. Getting solo kills on multiple top team, top laners, mm -hmm. Alfari falling into yep. his hands, you know, and him. it just seems like the the rest of the team was so happy too. It was cool after the game, your FlyQuest, old FlyQuest members or FlyQuest Academy members cheering for him as well as the Golden Guardian oh, yeah. uh, members cheering for him. And that that's something that the Golden Guardians needed to to dig their way out of last place. You know, tied down there now, but uh, sure. but on the way up. So right. last round robin, so they get nine games to play. They're exactly. five behind Immortals. They're two behind FlyQuest, as you mentioned, tied with CLG. Again, they need to make eighth to get the postseason, so at least make up two, or maybe make up five if FlyQuest keep going. That'll obviously be tough. Uh, but yeah, they, they look so much better. Uh, I know doing research for the top lane tier way back in the middle of spring and like looking at Iconic with Nile, and it's like. He just like ignores top lane and Niles plays aggro and gets no help. And the guy just like dies because he doesn't have a jungler. And then here it's like how well coordinated they were on the tower dives. A Blaze all coming over, who's also looking great. Licorice uh, bringing over Iconic for the dives and like getting all those kills on Alfari where they're just like they keep fighting it well. Like that's really, really good. I assume some of that is Iconic leveling up, which is which is good for him. I assume some of that's, you know, Licorice having good lane communication. I'm not sure why he couldn't have that happen with Jose Diodo and Palafox, but he's got it here so far, as far as I can tell, with Iconic and a Blaze Olive. It's like, cool, that's going well. Yeah, one of the things I'm always skeptical in making, you know, very long extrapolated, you know, ratings, basically, Honeymoon of, phase. of teams and players is if, if they do hinge a lot on some early successful ganks because junglers, they just look so smart and so successful when you capitalize and you get your successful early ganks. Mm -hmm. But those can be very misleading as far as the numbers game of consistently trying to rely on that as a strategy and teams yep. drafting and playing around that a week of prep, you know, coming in like that. It turns around so quickly as like, 
now everyone's like, whoa, how is he so far behind in farm? Well, the gank didn't work out this time and, and he, he actually lose a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you don't get counter jungled, uh, if you do a smart pathing of trying to you know, section off one of your one of your quadrants, yeah. you're still going to be behind because you're skipping cans to do this and you're not getting the payout for it. So it's, it's one of the things with the most variance. And I, I think people need to, you know, take that into account when judging things like this. I think Iconic has had a very good streak of a lot of early ganks, you know, and the the Volley Bear priority for several junglers in the LCS. This this champion is super good at a lot of these early ganks. It it definitely does not have as much say later towards those team fights and you you do have to snowball and make use of the ultimate tower diving as well. Mm -hmm. So, that's definitely something to keep your eyes on with it. Yeah. Tracking. I do think Iconic has been helped a little bit by Licorice's return as well, because I would assume, to your point about, like, what's different with Licorice? And I would be like, well, obviously, it was a bad environment in FlyQuest. Not necessarily because anyone was toxic, but just like, you just lost a million games. You're going to feel like crap. Yeah. And as soon as something goes wrong, you're like, oh, no, it's happening again. It's hard to not think like that. But I bet he also, they talked about him, he said this, having a lot of extra res responsibilities and shot calling and communication on FlyQuest. He probably came into a new team that was already playing together, and they weren't like, hey, lead our team. Yeah. They were probably just like, hey, just slot in and play the game. That said, he was fitting for Solo, who was like, right? Like, you actually heard some of um, yeah. Golden Guys leaders talk about this. It's like, well, uh, I can narrow when he was on this desk, uh, or, you know, one like this one uh, on the LCS. He's like, well, yeah, like Solo was like this veteran guy who had experience coming in. So he did kind of fill similar shoes. I don't know how talkative they are in the middle of the game, right? Like, there's details that we literally just don't know from watching the games, you know, top down, but it was a relatively similar player as well, far as like grand positioning. Yeah, for sure. And I think the. My point is more that Stix A was probably already doing a lot of talking. I've heard that from what they said, Stix A and okay. the Blaze Olive when they were on the desk were saying that they do a lot of the shot calling anyways. Um, so it sounds like, you know, it wasn't like, hey, come in here and lead our team as the veteran who just got here, quite like it was with FlyQuest probably. Um, and then you can actually just communicate and be like, Iconic, come up here, I can kill this guy. And they can just focus on on laning shot calling. Even more than that, it's like, hey, you know, pick uh, pick whatever counter pick you feel like. Trundle into Renekton? Sure, go yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah, like, Bite him. He's, he's going to be a surprise great. factor. You know, throw some curveballs. Yep. We're Golden Guardians. We're 10th place. Do whatever you want, bro. <laughs> yeah. Win us some, some games. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Honestly, that that's... That's one of the most liberating feelings. Just get in there, do whatever you want. Sure, go crazy, go ham, let's get it. Uh, so that's definitely a, a fun one to track. Let's get to the top teams though, because the top jumble. What yeah. happened? Exactly. While there are so much successes at the bottom side and so many upsets, the other end of the upsets are the actual People who are upset, Mark. <laughs> they're supposed to be winning and they're not. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, on the top side, we'll start with uh, TSM, actually, because they they did go 1-2. This is still coming off of our Honda MVP section where I'm like, you know, speak of my MVP, and he's playing super well, but TSM still dropping some of these games where it felt like a couple of times, and even though they won one of them, forcing a bit on on some of the comps and some of the champions to to really try and use and it does it's an interesting topic which actually was broached to me by a couple of the top teams just specifically messaging me the concept of now that we do have three games of lcs the the teams are feeling strained in delivering consistency having lost a scrim day mm -hmm. because an lcs day you get one game and everybody else is playing too, so you can't really get a lot of good practice or or much out of it. You can do your one game and you can do your review, but it's it's hard to schedule around anything more concrete than that to to have some value. So I wonder if that is interesting because the drafts of TSM are always under hot topic and, and hot debate because they're you know not shy away from returning to something that didn't work the first time, you know, like the Lucian, like the Lee that type of stuff. I also feel like with TSM, there's a hot topic because they feel like they have a very defined play style that they keep trying to experiment out of with like the Lee Sin mid. Yeah. Uh, and then that first draft was like, okay, they took the Diana away and they were just like, pick the next AP jungler on the list because we're going AD mids this game. That's how, or that's how it felt to me, that they just yeah. had a predetermined draft that they were going to do no matter what the other team picked. And that's why CLG was able to beat them was the, the Diana takeaway. The next time they actually get the Diana yeah. and you see what they want to do. But even then it didn't look that clean. They like, Speaker had to pop the hell off to actually win that game. And he did. He did. He made that Diana look good. But Pop, I, pop, pop. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think to your point, TSM is trying to branch out. They're trying new mm-hmm. things. Fine, fair enough, go for it. Um, but there's probably less practice time during the week, like you're saying, to get uh, extra reps with the AD or melee mids mm-hmm. that they're trying to, to make this work with. And people always bring into the conversation at this point, they've secured playoffs, these yeah. types of things. Yep. And so then there's all this speculation around who's trying the most, who cares the most, that type of right, stuff. Yeah. Uh, e- even ahead of securing actual playoff spots and stuff like that, the, the playoffs entry is very liberal. To, to be yeah. just included in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the actual spots are, are what it right. comes down if, to later. If you get first or second, you get a first round bye. That's cool, right? And some teams want that. Some teams actually want the extra practice. Your first round opponent, if you're third, fourth, is like, you're playing Dignitas or Immortals. Like, are you actually afraid of those guys? Probably not, right? The, the teams in seven, eight, is, they're just like down in lower bracket anyway. So you're going to skip yeah. those guys. So it's like, yeah, are you really afraid if you're, you know, cloud nine still like trying to find your footing? You're like, eh, we're playing Dignitas. Like, whatever, we're fine, right? So I can totally see they're not being that big of a strive. Unless again, you want the buy, right? And then it's there for the grabbing. And and I think looking good and building confidence, that's all valuable. Like putting fear into opponents, that's all really valuable as well. Um, I will say, I don't think teams absolutely have to play melee mids. I think it's fine. They're experimenting, trying to figure it out. Um, but like, if you look at like the, the top leagues in the summer split so far, like LeBlanc is tied for the third most played mid laner. Like clearly a lot of good teams around the world have to play LeBlanc. Lucian's in fifth, Rise is in sixth. Like, a lot of ranged mids are actively still being played and are clearly viable and winning games. So, like, if it doesn't work out, like, there's good stuff right now that other teams around the world also think are fine and worth playing. So, like, there is a fallback if it doesn't work. No, those are control mages. I guess Rise technically is, but... Uh, yeah. I mean, I think, Oriana's, like, number eight. Yeah. Azir's, like, number 12. Zoe's 13. Like, TF's 14. Karma Lula right behind that. So, like... That's pretty far down the list at that point. Sure, but yeah, you know, one, two, three is a Kali set Silas. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what's getting played a lot of, and those are getting nerfed a bit over time. And I feel like, uh, at least for TSM, they tried their best against 100 Thieves. I feel like both those teams were like, okay, we got some easier opponents to start the week. Let's have some fun. Yasuo, sure, why not? At least in mid. Uh, and then they, they, yeah. they wanted their best for the the game against each other. And that's why I think it's it's a good game to look at because uh, TSM still kind of got handled pretty easily by, by 100 Thieves, all things considered. Yeah, I think... A lot of these are where people need to separate some of just looking at headline and game result. One, two, a hundred thieves falling apart. <laughs> look, look at the different sections of the map and how they're performing in the stages of this game. And even in the win for TSM, it didn't feel like the the Lee Sin was like, oh, I'm so glad we have this instead of Victor. Some other, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, a, a big priority or whatever towards mid. But interesting, interesting stuff there as far as the variation I- included in that. It's to me, Team Liquid and Cloud9 both have reverted their early season coming in benchings of star players. So we had all this drama, all this change. Sven is back. Alfari is back. Jenkins still got in one game, but Alfari is back. Zven is back in there in the main lineup. Mm-hmm. And now, in summer, they are outside of the top three. Yeah. So for their summer records, this has cost them greatly. In the overall records, that is leaving a lasting mark too. On my eyeballs, it has left a mark. <laughs> <laughs> Go, continue, because it's... Do, do you see, with them having gone through all of that, there has been this discussion... And I know Double specifically talked about, you know, his experience of, you know, being subbed out and or or being benched and, and that type of thing, leaving lasting marks on how a team operates. Do you think that either of these teams will recover to their peaks or what will the new forms of Team Liquid and Cloud9 look like if they resolve themselves to... This is now, we are going right back to this solid every time, and we're going to practice and hone no more changes. I mean, I think it gets there at the end. Um, looking at Cloud9, for example, their first round Robin was four and five, second round Robin, five and four. Um, I imagine if you know they lost some synergy with Zven that, you know, Honda Thieves never had to go through, TSM never had to go through, EG didn't have to go through. It's like, okay, well, there's some ramp up, you know, coming back. It's like, okay, yeah, third and Robin, I'm going to say six and three probably for Cloud9, right? It keeps going up a little bit. Um, for TL, I'm imagining they choose Alfari long term, uh, assuming he's up for it, right? Like, still, like, vaguely off the rift reasons why I took a break, assuming he's he's in the right headspace. Like, that man still, that ceiling is absurd. And, like, yeah, that team keeps going. You know, it's too bad that Santorin, you know, doesn't seem to be coming back, but they made LCS finals with the five games with Greg the whole time or Armeo, right? So it's like, okay, these teams both can clearly go top three, no problem, right? Um, so so I'm never going to really? count them out. Yeah, I think so, right? Like, 
Um, it, again, assuming Alfari gets back to form, and what we already showed they could do with Armeo, TL can make finals and then play really tightly against Cloud9 who were peaking, right? So you just do that some more, but CN doesn't peak and you're there and that's fine. Um, 100 Thieves are, you know, another one up there looking good. EG are looking good, but like they can clearly play to that level. I think the point about 100 Thieves and EG is why I don't think that they can just get back to that level with mm. Armeo and it'll be good enough because I feel like 100 Thieves is pretty good. And they EG's... <laughs> yes. I, I would go stronger, Mark. Let's go. Come on, buff that up. If let's get you up, don't let's get stop that up. playing better, you're not making finals. Pump that up from a pretty might good... world. <laughs> uh, my the point is, good. <laughs> back in spring, it was TLC9, and that was the show. That was the LCS. Which of these two is going to win? Yep. TSM, you know, a little bit, had a couple runs, but like never seriously seemed to get together to the level needed to contest the championship. And I feel like now the teams in summer are actually gelling a lot better, their actual competition in like the 3-4 spot uh, with EG and, and obviously 100 teams now on top. But like that makes me feel like if you're just going to come back with Alfari playing GP and getting a 20 CS lead but not actually playing well as a team, you're not good. Like you have to get a lot better than you were. Yeah, this is you don't get your spot back. I'm sitting in it now, okay? Yeah, get me th out. To me, 100 Thieves and Evil Geniuses are not going to let go at, at any point. And they have had much cleaner curves because they have stuck together with their teams. And I feel like this, there's so much of an additive process of building a good League of Legends team that the teams that are, to me, making these reaction changes to rosters... Those should be last-ditch efforts that you just really think that the, the players in there together are not going to be able to hit the peak, are not going to be able to work out because you get so much by building synergy and trust and knowledge in League of Legends, both as a team and as individuals, just, just keeping them together. I don't see 100 Thieves and EG letting go. There is definitely a world where Cloud9 and Team Liquid fight their way back, you know, take it by force. But I think it's going to be way more exciting than the top of the LCS has ever been because we legit yeah. have five top teams. Yes. So I have a quick question. Do you think, so your, your team in the LCS looking at the other nine, has a, is a summer split harder or easier than the spring split? Harder. Harder? So harder because Hunter things look better, even though Cloud9 look worse and TL look worse and all these things, overall summer split is harder. I think just uh, as like a... a I'd say off I'd say my knee jerk reaction is yes harder, okay. but I think you should also specify from where you're looking because sure. perspective. If you're, if you're hundred thieves <laughs> looking out, maybe it's a little bit easier. Yeah, like basically for hundred thieves since they were under okay. the other top. If you're anyone but hundred thieves looking out, the LCS or if harder. you're CLG and you're squinting, you can't see anything. You're just like, <laughs> it looks the same okay. to me. You're at the base of a mountain. You're like, is that five thousand? So, or 10, what, what's that meme of like showing the two pictures or whatever? It's or like, the same picture. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. In the office. Okay, so the reason I bring it up is because Evil Genius. Sorry, uh, because TSM have the exact same record right now that they had in spring 12 and 6 in both cases um in the case of 100 thieves it's way better in case of eg it's way better right leading to the idea that well if the league's harder and we're these teams and our record is even better than before then like we've clearly heavily leveled up right in the case of cloud nine and tl the records are worse but they're worse in a stronger league so like i i think they have regressed to a certain degree don't get me wrong but like that's another way of looking at it, right? Is like TSM are, are treading the exact same water where they're still tied for second at 12 and six in a stronger league. I think it's an interesting one to talk about, especially when you talk about team strength, because like you could argue when you watch 100 Thieves as the fourth place team last split, you were like, oh my God, these guys, what are they doing? Even though they were fourth place, there were a lot of games where you're like, 100 Thieves is trolling. Yeah. And you kind of do that at now with C9 and TL. And TL. Yeah. But I think in terms of raw talent and skill, like C9 and TL should not be playing like that. They should be better. Yeah. We've seen them be better last split. So it does feel more competitive to, to that point. But yeah. you're right that like I'm watching the fourth, fifth place team play in both times, in both splits, being like, what are you doing? But you see the name is Perks and Vulcan and then you're like, but in playoffs, like, which we're As I'm opposed doing, really. to, yeah. you know, like Saligo and, and, and Ryoma. Right, right. We have some shiny new toys, but we also still have the sleeping giants. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah. what, to me, what makes it more, more competitive, competitive yeah. and, and more difficult. Yeah. Because to your point, you're always worried about the, are the sleeping giants going to wake up? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> they snap yeah. it out of it. This is the kind of thing that happened with old TSM. I remember talking with one of the like Immortals coaches back on like the Hooney Rainover days is like, I don't like how LCS seeds their teams because even though TSM got six seed, they're really the second best team in the league because it's TSM. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. They went like they went like eight and eight. It's like, no, 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 but it's TSM. They're going to turn it on. And then sure enough, they made the finals because TSM didn't miss a finals for the first like eight years of LCS or something. That's slightly exaggerated, but like doing that. they missed their first final like a year and a half ago. 
And every other time, like no matter what their record was, again, sixth place, last seed going into playoffs. Oh, look, they went to finals again. It's like, oh, okay. So like that is something that that has happened. So, hey, does that playoff have happened to TL? Does it happen to C9? Yeah, maybe. It, it, you know, so I think that's actually really interesting, right? We, we yeah. suddenly had these new top dogs where, I mean, TSM are back, you know, after like losing out on so many titles for so long, they're back. EG, again, look really outstanding. 100 Thieves look like the number one team. They're two games of anyone in summer. Like, okay, that's the current top three. But have you met Team Liquid and Cloud9? And like that'll be fun to watch for. Yeah, I, I think the teams that have realistic expectations of the top fight need to stop making personnel changes now. <laughs> We've got one one round robin left, and you really do need to build that synergy and that identity as a team to know your strengths or weaknesses, yep. what what you're going to be able to win with. I think that's the one caveat to the. TLC9 story is that like on the outside we're never really gonna know how necessary those roster changes were. They keep what? dying at crabs. Is it gonna is the same problem gonna pop up? Is it bursting at the seams? Yeah, it's like how much of that was Sven needing to get benched and how much was I? You know, like we don't really know. Especially the Sven one. There's like no insight given at all. Yeah. Um. So so maybe they needed to make those changes and now they're like trying to recover. I don't those know. Goddamn crab fights. <laughs> Crabber. Yep. Just path top to bot, fight for bottom scuttle. It's fine. Just do that. You know? <laughs> Just ignore scuttle. I mean, it's yeah. actually crazy because C9, when they were dominating la just a year ago, so much of it was like, Blabber can win every skirmish. Blabber's yep. going to outplay every jungler. Yeah. You know, with Niski, with perks, doesn't matter. They're going to be able to win the 2v2s. They'll win 3v3s. Mm hmm. And now, you know what's funny? They actually lost a fair amount of crab fights before, too. Remember against TSM last year, there was like a disastrous. I don't. I wouldn't say a few. Okay, I, they had a couple they, disastrous the, crab fights yeah. in the past, and then they could recover from it. What's changed the most for me is like you guys like fall apart once something goes wrong. Now for, mm. for C9, I mean Sven and Bulkan aren't nearly bot diffing as hard as they were before. Like that, it was that, actually yeah. amazing how much. Yeah, I don't want to put it all on. Uh, yeah, the but, but like, that's how they won. It was just like, well, no, just Sven's better than everybody, so it's fine. And Vulcan's better than everybody. Like they were on complete like yeah. peak form. Yeah, I mean. Spring. The, there are games now where you're looking at like Fudge is the best player on this team. Yep, yep. right up. And <laughs> that did not happen yeah. before. But Fudge and Zen were like two v eight for like yeah. all of MSI. That's basically. the problem. He needs to go back to Gragas top. That's when they were <laughs> ripping off wins in spring when he was. I like that Lee Sin though a lot. <laughs> he was real good at that champion. <laughs> it's it's some sort of uh, some law of alchemy, Mark. Where Equivalent like, exchange. <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> Fudge looks good. It's, Sorry, it, Ben. It's out of whack. Sorry, we we got to <laughs> got to put him back down. That's. Uh, all right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if that one tests out. We do have some good questions from our listeners that have been sent in here. Great. Anchor question number one from Adam Strasser. If you guys could choose one non-jungle champion to be given jungle buffs, who would you choose? My vote's for Rakan Jungle. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Ah. I Mastermind just, in the making here. Yes. <laughs> <It's> good. <laughs> what if I don't have my own opinion, but I just disagree with his? Great, go for it. You don't want to see Rakan. <laughs> that would be Mark. so broken. Would anyone have fun playing against Rakan if you had like a good clear speed for some reason? Mm -hmm. I don't know what buff he's suggesting. You know, because he just said Triple he wants damage to jungle monsters. Rakan. Yeah, to be good. Your W one shots every camp. Yeah, three. It's like the Morgana yeah. buff. Three hundred percent damage to monsters. Yeah, go Hit much. Yeah, I, uh, I'm on his side. I think it's fun, but I'm from the jungler. jungler perspective. Mark is talking is speaking for everyone else. <laughs> everyone else in the game will perma ban Rakan jungle if he can just come flying in with a charm alt like setup at level. Yeah. Six. I just come through lane ganks. They're just the easiest. I come E. You E onto, onto someone, what, you W. Whatever your support is, guess what? I'm mm -hmm. jumping off you, jumping off the support. Yeah. Sounds, lane ganks. sounds great for the for the jungler. I would add uh, ranged mages to the mix. I think that's one class that really just doesn't exist here. Like what? Fiddlesticks. So Fiddlesticks is like kind of Morgana's there. in there. Zyra's in there, Freak. I mean, do you really think anyone plays Zyra jungle? And Morgana jungle, and you know, got... Well, we're gonna we're gonna get her to the point where she is, you know, she, it is not her primary role. She's which at is the point where yeah. Broxa was previously playing her in jungle before yeah. the buffs. Right. So I think Morgana jungle is is a viable option, mm. but most of the magic damage junglers that are viable and good are melee. You have got Lilia and yeah. and Diana and the like, and that's fine. Like those champions are cool, but like, yeah, like is that really playable? Like, do you actually know if she's like completely like playable at all? Like, um, you know, the Azirs and whatnot. Like, just like a straight up mage. I feel like we have so so few of in the jungle. I feel like I may be a crotchety old jungler, okay. but I don't feel like every type of champion should be able to jungle. Hmm. I feel like. You don't want to learn jungle more play champions styles. who can survive the jungle. Jungle used to be right. something you actually had to survive. 
<laughs> True. Now it's the something. Been tamed. Now it's something where you farm. You can farm health, basically. Yeah, uh, you that's can. True. I want Malzahar because uh, oh, I used to play know. Earth Jungle Malzahar, and you get red buff and blue buff, and just go in front of someone's turret and drop some minions. Okay. He, he shits on the Rakan, which is way cooler, and, and he he wants to play Malzahar. Malzahar. I want to power farm my jungle with my little my homies, just running around. <laughs> Great. What the, what yeah. The fun one. Uh, I'm gonna say the new champion. Action jungle. Yeah, I, yeah. I want I want the new champion to be in the jungle. That's okay. it's not he's not even out yet, and I already want you jungle said, bust. You for said him. it earlier, so you're right. You know, you're not you're not even inconsistent. Boomerang, 300 percent damage to monsters. That's how you make anything viable. Yeah, Take pretty your much. AOE skill. Yeah, 300 percent. Right. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Is you know, can you get through the jungle in time? All right. The next one we have is from Reggie. I'm assuming that's not Reginald. Who knows? Hey guys, first time caller, long time listener, big fan of the show. I love off-meta picks, and I was curious if you think any of them from the other major regions might make their way into LCS. For example, Doinbee's Kled Mid, Draven, Tarek. Which of these do you think has a big chance of being played here? Thank you. I've, I've got a front runner in Tarek. I think Tarek's definitely like quite good. Uh, we have a lot of like really AD heavy team comps, um, right? Where it's like Diana's a one magic damage champion. Let's go. Tarek's actually a pretty good armor stacker. Um, like he 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 generally fits in in physical heavy melee heavy comps like as a counter pick because it's usually pretty telegraph it's usually pretty slow you have time to get your ulti off the stuns are gonna line up on like four targets pretty reliably like this is actually a good meta game for Tarek. Plus it pairs I, well with Callista. I like Tarek Callista a lot. Feel like we had a Tarek recently. Yeah, we did. D two versus either like Fnatic or Madline something like that. Yeah, even um, in NA. But or maybe this did, was Academy. Wasn't there like a? Uh, I swear a it was in NA. Tarek. That's why I'm like. Uh, reaching because I feel like it was a Kindred Tarek game and Hunter Thieves played Azir into it and they scooped people out. Yeah. Was that with right? Tarek? Wasn't Tarek one of them? We, I swear we had yeah, one I'm in with NA you, too. I can find it. So yeah. as far as off meta picks, great. That also come from us. Haha. -ha. That's true. That have been utilized. I'm surprised he didn't message. And I, this makes mine better. Then Shaco was playing in the LPL. Hell yeah! Give me some Shaco back. I've been wanting it ever since Moon used it a okay, couple of years it, ago. Was it, it wasn't. Troll AP box stacking Shaco, was it? I didn't look at the actual build. I'm zero <laughs> picks. I'm assuming it was crit. I, yeah, I'm assuming it was it was normal Shaco. Zero well, actually, not, not crit. Picks. I'm assuming it was a uh, stride breaker. Probably so. But I want some Shaco back in my life. Okay, it made the one little blip in LCS with uh, with Moon. So uh, yeah, I like I'm gonna go with that because that one that comes from the LPL. Must I think be. the more likely ones are the the bottom lane ones. Draven, I feel like is is probably the most likely because. That that can be easily used into um, into matchups on bottom lane where you want to have your know, aggressive focus from you and your jungle. I think that is a super viable strat just right now that that teams can implement. Yeah, it's not going to be all all the time, but if you're designing your champ select around that, I think yeah. Draven definitely gets it there. Doing B's Kled is more feared than any other the mid laners Kled. Kled. It oh. would have fit into the old CLG bongo comps. Yeah, you know, they it, could flex mm -hmm. it away from Thin and have Pobelter po theoretically play it. Yeah. It, I thought that would be the most likely time for it to have shown up in the LCS. Yeah. I mean, I Having like, not gotten it then, I don't. Yeah, I think Pope could use two health bars in some of these games. <laughs> uh, you Ooh. know, I think it would have helped a bit. I mean, I feel like CLG did, did their part already with the Vi and stuff. They yeah, they cool. did their off meta duty. Uh -huh. yeah. And now what? They and can go rest. You want <laughs> Abadage brought out the Yasuo. Never need to see that again. He did yeah. his, he did his <laughs> duty. It looked bad at MSI. It looked bad in, in his game here at uh at uh, LCS2. Yeah. All right. Okay. On to the Twitter question then. Derek loves T. Um or Derek LP now. Derek sends us a lot of tweets, a lot of love. So shout out to Derek. Thanks, Derek. Very positive vibes always from Derek. I appreciate it. All that. right, Derek says, hey, Azale, Kobe, Mark, uh, did not he did not know that Freak was going to be here. That's okay. He straight. did, and he still was, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, Azale told him personally. With the new items added to League of Legends, what are some champions that are really good with Anathema's Chains and Holebreaker? I'll give one that I thought was going to go Hullbreaker this weekend and didn't, which was Trundle. Uh, Trundle top specifically. Right. Mm -hmm. I thought once we saw it locked in that that's what it was going to be. Um, I mean, I understand Divine Sunderer first for just raw power and combat. Titanic for wave clear. Yeah, well, and then Titanic for wave Hullbreaker clear. Hullbreaker is getting a buff on the next patch. Yeah. Well, so this is the problem with it is it doesn't really 
fit in anywhere. And this is what Azale was talking about. So like we were watching the trundle and it's like, all right, well, he wants this at first to be able to keep beating the Renekton to get to turret. Yeah. And then like, this is better for wave clear and make sure you can get to turret. And then now it's three items into the game and like half the turrets are dead already and you need to fight and you're losing the game. So you can't build it now because you're not going to turrets, you're team fighting. I mean, I just think it's an underpowered item right now. I mean, it's underpowered. And I think just in terms of raw usability, it's pretty tough to actually fit in somewhere. Yeah, so from what I can tell, so I don't actually, another question is like which champions. Uh, my understanding, because uh, an Riot has like a bunch of the data reports and one of the ways they can slice it is like, okay, show me like, for example, Divine Thunderer win rates. Like show me the Divine Thunderer users and like show me, you know, the top four like mythics they buy and show me the Thunderer's win rate across those and show me all the second items that they buy. Like mm -hmm. how is Zonius comparing to like Cosmic Drive and Void Staff and whatever else? And they have those reports, right? So I know that they know who's good at using Soulbreaker. I don't have that report. So I don't know, but I, I'm pretty I sure there are I will tell you right now, Nasus and Trundle are Great. good users of Holebreak. Wonderful. I think Fiora is probably up there as well. Like if you really, really don't want a team fight, uh, which like is kind of a Fiora thing in a certain degree, like you're kind of doing that. Um, for Trinomir, it's tough because he wants to buy crit stuff. But like, so yeah, unfortunately I don't have an answer, but I know like there are a couple champs that are like not bad at it and it's going to be buffed. So where like a few more going to pick it up. Uh, I'm, I think yeah. it's probably needs to be about a second item. Uh, and that's kind of where it's going to line up. Yeah, to me, to me, it's it's pretty focused on like the Nasus is my is my number one recommendation. I think Trundle's right in there with it. Uh, for things like the Fiora, I think the more damage oriented, full damage build might still be the way to go. We'll see as far as the balance with the item, it, you know how how annoying it actually gets and how hard you commit to that split push. Yeah. That seems like, you know, the strategy, that's the strategy that you're looking for with yep. this item, though. Yep. And, you know, the the tweaks that they make to it, I they haven't released the exact details on them, but but we'll see once those are released. Yep. I definitely see it as long as they they want it to see play. So mm -hmm. it's going to be buffed to a point where some... You can no longer if ignore it. playing Nasus... Yeah, it's, then, it's playable and valuable. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be in there because all Nasus needs is... Renekton's you know, a first item, item incoming. And yeah. Uh, Renekton auto wins lanes yeah. build. And then Anathema's Chains is... Mundo. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I mean... Uh, and, Mundo is the play. Yeah, Anathema's Chains Mundo is very good. Um, it is one of the best sources of pure health you can buy. Um, it's better than Warmogs because you're not going to rush Warmogs because the passive doesn't turn on until your second item. So it's just like, yeah, Muna's an easy one. He's got uh, a bonus health ratio on like three abilities. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a, his main scale. That's all you like. Yeah. Yes, you want other side things, but yeah. this is your main stat. Right. You know? to, to get durability, you then eventually want to add in armor and MR, but you're getting good durability stats. And and by the way, in general, right, like health is the best early game durability stat. It is better than armor MR. Like yes. if you can if you can put money in a giant's belt instead of steel caps, that is going to be better against Renekton in most cases. Um, in most cases, that's going to be true. And Mundo also gets damage out of health through his W E and R. So it's like, oh well. I buy this and then I buy Warmogs or Sunfire, but then the other one. And um, so, so yeah, it makes sense there. Uh, but yes, worth pointing out, Anathemas is not good when there are many threats against you. If you are going to be in team fights, like it's going to be hard for a jungler to want to go Anathemas chains because, well, you want your mythic first of all, but two, you're fighting everyone almost equivalently. So it's mm. going to be really hard to like stack it up in time before you gank the top laner and then stack it up in time before you fight for dragon. Yeah, so the thing that a lot of the pros have been saying thus far is that it can effectively be used in full-on 5 on 5 team fights to specifically attack team comps where there is one threat of one yes. damage type. Mm. And then you can just hard build the other resistance. Or just one you know, threat overall, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, Some of those if it's a games. full stop right there, then <laughs> the is you're golden. Yeah. Yeah. But more, even more use cases than the obvious of like, okay, there's only one fed person that you have to worry about. Yeah. If there are, you know, cases where it's a four AD, one AP. Yeah. One of the interesting bits of math though, and like it, it still may prove out this is still a good option, uh, is like, well, percent damage reduction is better as a replacement of armor magic resist, the more armor and MR you yeah, have. Yeah, so like, yeah. if you need to counter build like the Oriana mid, Witsend's just better than Anathema's against the Oriana. Like just, it just does more. Now, sure, you also get health and whatnot. And as a pure tank item, it's still gonna beat Witsend, for example. But like, yeah, there, there's mathematical pushback on the don't buy MR, get Anathema's and target Oriana. Yeah. It's like, no, just build a Visage. It's the same health and functionally the same damage reduction against Oriana with other stats on top too. Yeah. Now, maybe you want the tenacity reduction, right? Like, they're, they're, again, they're not just one is one item, but but yeah, math math pushes that. And I, well, the, the reason that I think you're overlooking here is that the gain you're getting out of it is all of your money being spent on the armor part and the effectiveness versus everybody else. Right, I mean, you could still, but like the idea, right? It's like, 
okay, I can buy Anathemas or I can buy Spirit Visage, right? And if they do similar things as Oriana, I can still buy a Frozen Heart and a Randuins and everything else. Difference right? in, like, in the health value, though. Sure, right? There, there is some differences. I'm not Again, I'm not saying they're the exact same item, but yeah. like in the case of Visage, well, if anyone shields me or I heal myself ever, I've made up the health difference, right? So I think uh, also with Pen, you could argue that if you're going single target. For yeah, this, it's better against Void Staff, for example. Right, like most people go Void Staff second in a lot of games. Um, so if you were against like a Diana Jungle, mm -hmm. who's going to, uh, well, usually goes. Uh, Zonia's second now, but yeah. sometimes people go on some AP champions that go that second. So but, and, you could argue then, okay, I'll get anathemas because they'll never pen through my 30% damage reduction. Yeah. But in the case where she's going rocket belt sork shoes, like, well, I want Memoir even more because she's flat pen, <laughs> right? Like, again, I don't want to get into big math thing, but like, we I got think time. In some cases, people slightly overrate the anathemas, but it is a good item. Yeah. I, I, I especially like it versus, you know, we joked about it as soon as it was released, the changing the name like Chovy's Chains. When there's one player on the enemy team who is the big threat, then Licorice Chains. Licorice, Licorice has been unchained. It's time to chain him back up. Great immediately all right that is going to wrap it up for this episode of the dive thank you again honda for making every episode possible and remember if you're watching us on youtube hit that subscribe button and you won't miss a single episode no matter who's here i thought i was doing the outro too late darn it go ahead mark where'd you leave off uh first paragraph that'll wrap it up for us now thanks again to honda <laughs> for making this episode possible remember if you're watching on youtube hit that subscribe button especially the bell so you don't miss an episode of The Dive. You can also check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor FM. Please send us your questions on Twitter using the hashtag The Dive LOL. I mute those threads usually. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, make sure to give Kill us your it. own takes on Anchor. And we might just react to them here on The Dive. The LCS, no rhetorical questions, please. No rhetorical <laughs> questions. The LCS goes into its third and final round robin this Friday with Immortals in Cloud9. Kicking it off. Freak lost the bet. He's going to do some face paint stuff. At 3 p.m., don't miss it. To me, the bet winner. Good job. <laughs>